Hey there, my name is Julian from MemberStack, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do anything that you want with Webflow form data. So what we're using here is something called make.com webhooks. And if you don't already know, make is an automation tool and you may already be using it and you may have not seen how it is that you can use it to take your Webflow forms and absolutely bring them to the next level. So that's what I'm going to show you here in this video. And in this video, I'm going to use the example of having a form submission, create a Webflow CMS item, and then redirect the person who submitted the form to that CMS item. So without further ado, let's take a look here what we've got in Webflow. All we have is a standard form, nothing funky going on here. And then also I have a make account. Now, if you don't already have one, go to make.com and create an account. It is free for up to two different scenarios. And then I believe it starts at $10 a month which if you ask me is well worth it with the capabilities that you can get from this thing. So what a lot of people would do if they're trying to use a Webflow form is they would click this and they would do a Webflow form submission. But what I'm going to tell you is the best way to go is to use the webhooks. They are a lot more flexible. So let's go ahead and type in webhook. Now we can see up here we have webhooks. And if we click that, we have a few options. We're going to want to do custom webhook. And then we have this option here. Let's go ahead and click add to create a new one. Now, what this means is that this URL is going to listen for things being sent to it. So you're probably for the most part going to be creating a new one every time. Let's call it create CMS item. And let's save that. And then it gives us this funky long URL. Let's go ahead and copy that. You can also just click copy address to clipboard right here. And let's go ahead and go back into Webflow. So here we are in Webflow and we have our form selected, as you can see right there, form. And let's go hit settings. Now you can see this action. So let's go ahead and click that, paste this URL and select post. That is very important. If you don't select post, it is not going to work. So now let's go ahead and publish it. And then we're going to open our live and publish site. So what you can see here is that it says it is loading. It's look, listening for data. I would recommend actually clicking off that and clicking run once. Sorry. Let's click OK. And then let's click run once. And I will show you why in just a second. So here's our live site. Let's go ahead and open that. And here we have our form. So let's just type... Giuliano, let's get fancy with it. Hello, my name is Giuliano. There we go. Okay, extra W, all is good. Now let's go ahead and click this button. And as you can see, it just says accepted. So it's not doing anything yet. Let's go back into make and we can see this. So now it is showing this data that I submitted and we can do stuff with this. Now, the reason I said to just do run once is because it tends to pass through the data better, which makes the next steps in the scenario easier. That is all. It's okay. If you forgot to do that, it's totally fine. You could do it at any stage to get the right data flowing in. So now make is receiving our data and let's see what it is that we want to do with that. Let's go ahead and click add another module and then what do we want to do with this data? And this is where I'm saying you can really do anything because if I click add another module, you can see so many different things here. These are all built in integrations and you can use HTTP requests to send data to something that doesn't have an integration, but there is a very, very significant chance that you are going to find what you're looking for in the native integration. So a couple of use cases for this are one, of course, creating a CMS item, as we're doing right now. Another one is sending customers into a CRM. So let's say they fill out a form and you want to get them into HubSpot. If you use that, you can totally do that. You can send them into things like Intercom. You can send them into things like MailChimp. You can use this to create actual web apps where data is going into certain things like Airtable, and then you're using something to get that data from Airtable. If you can think of anything that cannot be done with this, please leave a comment because I so far have not thought of one. Anyways, let's go and search Webflow because that is what we're looking for. Then let's go ahead and do create an item. So 
Let's select the correct one here and then select the site. Our site is called Webflow Form Data to anything. So, all right, there's our site. I had to reconnect that. So now let's select that site and select our collection, which is called items. Now we have data to work with. So let's go ahead and do the name that we got right there and the message that we got right there. So this can obviously be anything. We also have used this quite a bit in the past for job boards. So somebody can post a job, it's gonna automatically get created, so on and so forth. Slug, you can leave this blank and then we could leave these empty. And then currently with the Webflow V2 API, you have to add another step. Hopefully that changes soon, but that is okay. And that is publish an item. So what we're gonna do here is get the site again, and then we're gonna to have to select the item. So again, select the collection and then click map. And we're gonna get that item ID from right there. So this is just an overall tutorial on how you can use make to do anything that you want it to do. And then let's go ahead and select the final step. Again, we're gonna do webhook and we're gonna do webhook response. So what this means is the following. The person who fills out the form is gonna send in data to this webhook. And then after everything's done, the webhook is gonna to respond to them saying something and we wanna redirect them. So let's do this. Let's do 302, which is the sign for redirect. Um, feel free to Google HTTP status codes to figure out which one makes sense to put here if you're not doing a redirect. Then show advanced settings and add a custom header. For key, let's do location. And for value, this is the URL we wanna send them to. So let's go back to this site here and get our URL, then back into make, and this would send them to the homepage. So what I can do now that is quite cool is do slash item, which is the collection slug slash slug. So now if I click okay and save it, let's go ahead and click run once to see what is going to happen. So here we are again on this page, let's say Jeff, my name is Jeff. And let's see what's gonna happen this time when we click create a CMS item. It's loading and then we get redirected to this page, which is a live CMS item. So again, this can be a job post, this could be absolutely anything that you want it to be. But now you know how you can use a make.com webhook to accept data and then to send something back to the user. So this is super versatile. I'm sure now that you know, you're probably gonna find use cases for it all throughout every single Webflow project that you do. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. So if it was, leave a like and stay tuned for future videos. Have a great day.